So just for everyone to know, we are going live with TTT, so we are asking everyone to please take your seat. So good night to one and all. Senator the Honorable Paula Gopi Schoon, Minister of Trade and Industry. The Honorable Terence Dial Singh, Minister of Health. The Honorable Marvin Gonzalez, Minister of Public Utilities. Senator Renuka in the, in the Attorney General's Office. The Honorable Fali Augustine, Chief Secretary of Tobago House of Assembly. Members of the Diplomatic Corps. His Worship Councillor Faik Mohammed. Sponsors of TIC. Members of the Trinidad and Tobago Manufacturers Association, past presidents and past members of the board of the Trinidad and Tobago Manufacturers Association, members of local, regional, and international business community, members of the media, honored guests. So given the time constraints that we face, I would ask all others who are coming to speak to you tonight that they, they do not need to repeat the entire salutation listing. So we're going to save some time on that. Welcome to one and all, the opening of TIC 2022. We all have eagerly anticipated this moment. We have been locked down for two years. I want to assure the Minister of Health that TTMA has, has adhered to all protocols, safety protocols, respecting the guidelines that you set for us, Minister. And when you get the opportunity to tour the floor, you will see that we have adhered to all the protocols, health and safety protocols. I would also like to thank all our international guests. We have participation from 38 countries at TIC this year. Not all as exhibitors. Most of them are coming as buyers to the TIC. We have exhibitors from eight different countries throughout the Caribbean, China, India, and America. So I would like to pay special welcome to our foreign delegates participating in the engagement here today. I humbly apologize for not introducing myself. I am Ramesh Ramdin. I will be your MC to tonight. My task is a simple one, which is to invite our special invited guests to speak to you so you can hear from them their perspective of what TIC means to them, what their organization means to TIC, and how all these organizations co together collective, collectively work towards the development of Trinidad and Tobago, especially the non-energy manufacturing sector of this country. Our first speaker is no stranger to the TTMA, former president of the TTMA, and presently, the chairman of Investity. Ms. Franca Costello is a director of Lifetime Roofing Limited, a full service specialty manufacturer and contractor of roofing ar architectural and structural systems that is registered in Trinidad and Tobago. Ms. Costello sits, as I said, as chairperson of Investity and First Citizen Trustee Services Limited and is a director of the Board of First Citizens and Angostura Limited. I welcome Ms. Costello to the podium. Thank you, Ramesh. Out of respect of, for the other speakers to come after me and the ministers that are here, I would like the attendees in the back of the room to please find their seats as quickly as possible. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. All protocols observed. It is my absolute pleasure to be here this evening as the Investity Chairman 
to share a few words on the occasion of the physical reinstatement of the TTMA's Trade and Investment Convention since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. Congratulations to the TTMA President, the Board of Directors, the CEO and the hardworking executives of the TTMA for ensuring the viability of this very important event for TNT business, and I invite you to congratulate them with me. It is encouraging, exciting really, to see businesses rise out of the ashes of difficult times. Times that we still battle, as we must acknowledge the global impact of war, supply shortages, and the disruption to distribution. It is not enough to just say that we are resilient any longer. We must be brave enough to do the thing we do differently. We must adapt to be efficient, responsive, and accountable. The Agri-Investment Forum last week made a clear call to invest in our food sustainability through agro-processing with a goal for CARICOM to reduce our import bill by 25%, remembering that what gets measured gets done. And this week, Investity shows its commitment as a sponsor and a participant of TIC to facilitating investments in manufacturing of products we use and need in the Caribbean. The unwavering support of regional, local, and private sector leaders to build capacity in support of sustainability is a pivotal moment to business strategy. As the National Investment Promotion Agency, InvestTT has responsibility to attract local and foreign direct investment for hotel development, logistics and distribution, BPOs, maritime services, renewable energy, finance, technology, agro-processing, and light industry. These industries are impactful to our economic diversification, our sustainability, job enhancement, and the enrichment of our island's creative culture that makes us so unique. The inventors of steel pan, world-class chocolatiers, innovative Caribbean berry farmers, eco-tourist concierge, amongst champions of business in construction, finance, service, and manufacturing. Both local and foreign investment faced its own challenges through COVID, but the resilient found emerging opportunities from the changing tides of the very same supply chain issues. For the fiscal year 2022, ending this September, Investity budgeted to close 230 million investments, a 70% increase on the year before, and a laudable challenge coming out of the pandemic when global investment figures were still trending downwards. It is my pleasure to announce that to date, Investity has facilitated over 460 million in investments, with another 100 million to be closed by the end of September. Our local business climate doubled down and invested 320 million, which represents an increase of 320% of the previous year. Foreign investment totaled 140 million, and the BPO industry dominated our foreign investment interests, citing skill, articulation, and good vibes of our people being our biggest asset. And I couldn't agree more. Over 2,000 job positions will be made available through these investments. Investity is matching investors with opportunities by highlighting our strategic advantages, our people, our infrastructure, and our location. Investors are provided with strategic market information and data, assistance with property and location, regulation and registration aid and aftercare services. Investity is your guide through your investment process and will work with all sizes, from under 1 million to over 100 million. Your business is important to us. It is important to our country. Ladies and gentlemen, through the support of our champions of business, such as our Minister of Trade, Paula Gopi Schoon, and private sector organizations like TTMA, we expect great things to unfold in the coming years. We are not just resilient. Together, we will show the world what we have transformed to be better and stronger. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Castello. As you can see, Ms. Castello has moved on to invest and is representing Trinidad and Tobago and the business community in another capacity with excellence that we expect from her. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to recognize, and I think I fail to recognize, the Honorable Marvin Gonzalez, Minister of Public Utilities, who's here with us. And I must pay homage when we're talking about TIC to the founding fathers of TIC. We have within the audience tonight, Mr. Amjad Ali. We have other integral players in the formation of TIC, in Mr. Anthony Aboud. We have Mr. Rahal. We have Mr. Richard Lewis. These were the founding members in, of TIC in 2019 when we started with approximately 15 booths and 200 people in the Queen's Park Oval. We moved to Hilton, we moved to the Center of Excellence, we went to Hyatt, and then we back to the Center of Excellence. The last time we hosted a physical TIC, we had 17,000 people passing through TIC. That is why the Minister of Health advised us to manage our numbers, and Minister, I assure you again, we are doing that. So we have come a long way. Ms. Costello spoke about TIC 2022 coming on the heels of Agro Investment Forum. We heard the Prime Minister spoke about the Agro Investment Forum will be an annual thing, and we hope that the, the, four, the planners of this framework in Trinidad and Tobago could synergize and bring TIC and the Agro Forum together, and we can have a week or two weeks of business in Trinidad and Tobago when we inv invite the international community to see what we have in Trinidad and Tobago, not just from agriculture, but energy, um, non-energy manufacturing, everything that we have in offer, food and beverage, textile. We have some of the best manufacturers in the region, and I will say in the world, Mr. Al Mr. Ali always tell me, he said, Ramesh, Trinidad and Tobago are the factory gate. We could produce the best products in the entire world, and I firmly believe that. Some of the inefficiencies that happen outside of the factory gate curtail our growth. But we are working with the Minister of Trade. We are working with the Minister of Finance. We are working with Exam Bank to ensure that we remove those obstacles. So when we go out there and position ourselves in the global economic environment, the trading environment, Trinidad and Tobago products could stand proudly and compete with any player on the international market. With that being said, my task now is to introduce the second speaker to you guys. When we reached out to the THA Chief Secretary, he said, listen, Ramesh, you don't have to ask me twice. You and your president reach out to us, Tobago is here. You can't have Trinidad without Tobago. So I'm honored to invite Mr. Fali Augustine, Chief Secretary of the THA, to the podium. Mr. Augustine was raised in the Eastern community of Speyside. He credits his value and achievements to his community, which continues to shape his persona. He matriculated at the University of the West Indies to read for the Bachelor of Arts in Linguistics. At UWE, his passion for politics ignited, leading him to pursue a double major in international relations while serving on the executive of the Student Guild in his final academic year. His political arena presented another way for him to be of service to his community, to the people of Tobago, and I say it as well, the people of Trinidad. In 2017, he was elected as the area representative for the election district of Palutuvia. And in 2021, he was re-elected. He now leads a vibrant and youthful administration that is on a mission to make Tobago the greatest little island of the world. He's, devoted, he's a devoted husband, to his wife and enjoys traveling and baking in his leisure time. Chief Secretary, Mr. Farley Augustine. Thank you very much, Master of Ceremonies. Minister of Trade and Industry, Senator the Honorable Paula Gopiskoon and other government ministers who are present, and all other distinguished ladies and gentlemen who are here, good evening to you. Tobago says good evening to you. Uh, this year, 
the theme being business resilience, my mind couldn't help but focus on a Tobago proverb. And Tobago is one of those places uh, that is quite littered with colloquial sayings that we use to guide each other from time to time. And there's a Tobago proverb that says, rough seas do drown talk a pitney. In other words, rough seas cannot drown a turtle. Rough seas cannot trouble a turtle. And that's because the turtle understands that the very nature of the environment in which she lives uh, will move from calm waters to rough seas and over time he must learn to navigate both. When talking about business resilience, you can't want to be in business and not focus on the risks that are possible and also how you ought to treat with those risks. Trinidad and Tobago, like the rest of the Caribbean, have been taught over and over again that perhaps we need to rethink the way we see trade and investments. Our small size generally makes us very vulnerable to tremors that are caused by other people. And most times the things we struggle with are not the things we invented ourselves, but the things we just happen to be impacted by because we live in a global community. Whether it is global recessions, right up to the last major one in 2009, every terrorist activity threatens uh, our tourism industry, every storm wind that blows we feel threatened, notwithstanding the fact that the Caribbean region is not the largest producer of greenhouse gases. Every single time metropolitan states decide that they can't behave themselves and they need to be at war with each other, as we are seeing between Russia and Ukraine and the arguments between China and the USA, we suffer the impact. And of course, we are here today after a hiatus because of an infectious disease that ravaged the entire world. We didn't invent it, it did not start here, but we are impacted by it. But I want us to also understand that the business risks uh, that we face are not just those that occur globally. We must understand that a business right here in Trinidad and Tobago and across the region can experience tr trauma from government and other policy changes, from employee theft or fraud, from vandalism, from other cultural issues, from lack of skilled employees, from damage to property and commercial buildings like flood and fire, supply issues, management issues. In other words, businesses have to become resilient, not just against uh, global activity, but also things that are internal. But when I look at this country, Trinidad and Tobago, and, and the region, somehow we have always managed to survive. We have always managed to come up with our heads above the water, quite like a turtle in rough seas, still being able to surface over and over again. And it's not because God loves us more than anyone else, and perhaps he does. It's not because uh, there is just something in our DNA that is beyond the rest of the world, but it's because our history, our life experiences have all taught us how to survive these traumas. And the best way to survive these traumas is really and truly to find ways to hang together. Because if we don't hang together, you'll hang alone. And in our world, sometimes it's difficult to tell businesses that we ought to find ways to collaborate, find ways to share information, and share capacity, and share skills. Because competition and, of course, uh, capitalism teaches us that we don't need to share anything. But our best bet in standing against all the risk factors that we do face are really and truly finding ways by which we can collaborate. And so 
TIC, the Trade and Investment Convention that we have every single year, barring COVID, provides opportunities through which businesses, local, regionally, and, and foreign businesses, can actually collaborate with each other, share knowledge, and partner with each other. That's the biggest opportunity coming out of TIC that you should not miss this time around. For us in Tobago, we wanted to show up this year, just like every other year, but we wanted to show up uh, in an even bigger presence this year. And so I am proud to say that Tobago as a singular unit will be managing the single largest block within the uh, convention space. And that's because we were purposeful in saying this is an investment that we wish to make for our small and micro enterprises on the island of Tobago. We have also recognized that we have to look beyond uh, the usual things we seek to trade and begin to look at, for example, the creative sector. And I'm sure you observe the dancers, the speech band members. They are part of what Tobago wishes to offer to the world and that Tobago wishes to monetize. And we hear all this fancy talk about the orange economy, but we have to invest more in the creatives in order to earn from them. Can you imagine, have any, has anyone in this audience took the, taken the time, sorry, to actually count the value of a Rihanna to Barbados's economy, or a Usain Bolt, or a Bomali to the Jamaican economy? And time and time again, sometimes we push the creative sector to a side, not recognizing that they have a potential in really leading our country uh, towards the kind of diversification source that is required. From us in Tobago, we also brought along this year, uh, for the first time, the Stully Park Quarry Limited, because we want to say to the world that Tobago wishes to offer more than just tourism, more than just nice beaches, and we do have some of the nicest beaches in the world. And at the risk of being asked to swim back to Tobago, something which I practiced for in the past, I'll say we do have the nicest beaches in the country. But we have more to offer than that. And we are looking at what we have to offer in terms of mining, in terms of rock materials. We have TATCO with us, which is the Tobago Agriculture Development Company. And TATCO, in, on June 2nd this year, signed a MOU with Nuvo Enterprise. And in that partnership, and I spoke about partnership earlier, Nuvo is helping us to reach a market that we could not reach on our own. Nuvo is helping us with our packaging and some of our processing challenges that we have while we are still waiting and sorting out equipment on the island. And our intention is that TATCO will soon become the Caribbean region's number one producer of alternative flowers. And I'm sure the Minister of Health, who is here with us, will be happy to hear that we are pushing that because we're talking about gluten-free alternatives and healthier alternatives to the wheat that we import. We also have uh, some SMEs in leather craft and, uh, of course, uh, clothing and several other areas that we think are unique to the Tobago space. Because we are saying to the world, just like the rest of the country, that we are open for business, come and invest with us, have a chat with us, and let us work together. Trinidad and Tobago and the rest of the Caribbean region, we need to find post haste uh, these opportunities and begin to ensure that we do not just do like a turtle in rough seas and surface above the water, but that we make our landing shore, make our nesting shore, and be able to put our societies uh, at a place where we can earn and where we can be successful. We might be small, we might be considered to be insignificant by many in terms of our population sizes, but that does not limit our potential. The Caribbean, the Caribbean's potential is limitless. And so 
With these few words, I hope that TIC 2022 presents wonderful opportunities for all of you businessmen and women, for all of you enterprises. And again, I thank you, Minister of Trade. I thank you, TTMA and InvestTT for including Tobago as always as we march forward and hope to diversify the country's economy. But more than that, create opportunities and avenues through which our citizens can earn and our citizens can live much more productive and fruitful lives. Thank you and good evening. Thank you, Chief. If you allow me, Chief Secretary, to build on your metaphor of tides and oceans, I would like to say that rising tides raise all ships. And we at ETTMA firmly believe that any success of Tobago is a success of us in ETTMA. Our past president and board has a vision to bring TTMA as a, uh, Tobago as a permanent member onto the TTMA framework. And this board executed that. We have allowed and created a space, a permanent space, for a company in Tobago to have a seat at the TTMA. And we look forward to working with TTMA. And who knows, maybe in not too long a distant future, we can be hosting this event in Tobago. So that is something that we can look forward to. So thank you very much, Chief Secretary. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the president of the TTMA, our hardworking, dedicated, and committed leader of the board of the TTMA. Our current president of the TTM is Ms. Trisha Kusal, who is also executive director of finance and administration at the Kusal's group of companies, which allows for the management and execution of a wide range of economic aspects and activities. Her role in the center year old plus Kusal group allows her to possess a broad range of managerial skills, which is not limited to finance and administration, but extends to manufacturing, wholesale, retail. Ladies and gentlemen, it will take me quite a while to read through the biography. Let me just introduce to you our president, Mr. Shakusa. Senator, the Honorable Paula Gopi Schoon, Minister of Trade and Industry, the Honorable Terence Dial Singh, Minister of Health, the Honorable Marvin Gonzalez, Minister of Public Utilities, the Honorable Renuka Sagram Singh Suklal, Minister in the Office of the Attorney General, the Honorable Fali Augustine, Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, members of the Diplomatic Corps, all protocols observed. Good evening and welcome to you, our distinguished guests. I am pleased and energized to share this evening with you and to welcome you to the opening of TTMA's TIC 2022. This event, as you know, has been a regular one on the business calendar of TNT and is highly anticipated. The demand for booth spaces is usually indicative of anticipation. By the end of February, all spaces were completely bought. That tells the story. TTMA's analytics show that TIC is a catalyst that generates business opportunities, especially for firms in the non-energy business community of TNT. This year, the convention will be celebrating its 23rd year as the region's largest business-to-business -business event. Significantly, it will be the first physical TIC being held in two years, and the fitting theme is business resilience. The event represents an assembly and celebration of participants who have demonstrated flexibility, dynamism, and resilience in business. That is not to say that the world is back to normal. Business, businesses locally and regionally are still dealing with the effects of COVID-19 and more recently, the effects on trade by the Russia-Ukraine war. These types of environmental challenges are a fact of life and operations. When they are, however, met with a level of determination that results in businesses still being operational, that should be commended. The TTMA has taken the tone and spirit of enduring as a team of TIC 2022. To all businesses participating in TIC 2022, I applaud you and your ability to adapt and prosper. 
One of the key aspects of TIC remains TTME's commitment to offering your business as many matchmaking B2B services as we can put together. We seek to assist you as well through the strength of our TIC brand, which attracts the right buyers to our shows, as well as the general public to help you build and sustain a relationship with your audience. At this time, I wish to specially recognize the presence of our line minister, the Honorable Paula Gopiskun, Minister of Trade and Industry. Thank you for the cordial relations that you and your staff extend time and time again. It makes working towards solutions seem easier. TIC is one cog in the wheel rolling towards economic diversification. Another recent prong is our agreement with the Ministry of Trade and Export TT for executing several trade missions within this year and at least three more being planned until the end of 2022. The public-private partnership here is also already, has also already achieved other objectives such as the export booster initiatives. The staging of TIC now adds to the partnership to create the platform for all other successes the non-energy sector will be able to achieve for fiscal 2022. I will report on those at another time. Right now, I wish to also recognize the presence of the Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, the Honorable Folly Augustine. The THE and the TTME have a strong partnership that has materialized at TIC over the years. The Tobago Pavilion has always been a major attraction to the show. We also look forward to the remarkable display of Tobago's products and culture at TIC 2022. The THE and the TTME are building on the foundation of an already solid relationship, and in the coming years, together, we will make TIC truly representative of our twin island states. On a more general note about the value of TIC, it not only contributes to TNT's foreign exchange earnings via promoting exports, the annual event also creates a spin-off economic activity. Its staging entails the employment and business opportunities for many small and medium enterprises, such as caterers and vendors in the food courts, contractors who build booths, vendors hired to decorate booths, accommodation providers and hotel services, transportation of the materials, hiring of extra support, temporary employment to manage and run the affairs of exhibitors, and so on. In other words, the economic multiplier effect is significant and runs into millions of dollars. As such, benefits of the TIC ripple outward from exhibitors who seek to secure market opportunities in a wide cross-section of other enterprises and especially the services sector. In 2019, TIC generated approximately $70 million in business for participants of the show. It is anticipated that this year the returns will be just as significant, having participants from over 38 countries. This all collectively works towards CTMA's set integral target of doubling our non-energy exports by 2025 relative to the 2020 figure. That represents a growth of $7 billion within five years. Ladies and gentlemen as I, of this distinguished audience, as I close my remarks, I want to leave you with one thought. It is that TIC remains an excellent example of how public-private partnerships can work to generate business activity, employment, and export. As the TIC celebrates number 23, we came back strong after a two-year hiatus. We recognize business resilience and entrepreneurship and the show that we are as, and show that we are as adaptable and resilient as the businesses we represented. When planning this show, we had to take the pandemic into consideration. The show this year is half of its original size with 127 booths representing approximately 180 companies. Some 34 countries registered to be part of the event with 25 international companies being physically present. There are more than 250 B2B meetings and some 21 educational and informative webinars. The TTME has worked hard to maintain the high quality of its offerings that participants expect. As I come to the end of my address, I would like to make a special mention of people and companies who make TIC 20, 2022 possible. I must also thank my dedicated board of directors and the hardworking secretariat team led by our CEO, Dr. Ramdeen. 
As we plan for a much bigger and full-scale event next year, I look forward to your continuing support that will allow us to build upon the success of 2022. Thank you. Thank you very much, President, Ms. Trisha Kusal, for those very enlightening words. Ms. Kusal would have touched on a number of issues, and I just want to point out one thing. She mentioned some of the activities that would have already taken place for TIC, which is our webinar series on B2B virtual engagement. She identified 20, 21 B2, um, webinar seminars that would have taken place. We added two more to that, so we actually completed 23 webinar series with over 1,500 people participating in the webinar series. The B2B engagement, we had approximately 160 B2B meetings. Some of the meetings were postponed and canceled, but have no fear. Those meetings are rescheduled to take place on the floor of TIC over the next two days. So the B2B engagement is going to continue over the next two days. I would like to also recognize two former ministers of trade who work assiduously to allow TIC to be what it is today. In the embryonic stages, we work with Minister Valley. He was integral in shaping TIC, allowing us to carve a course to allow the non-energy business manufacturing community to have a space in the cal calendar of business activities in Trinidad and Tobago. And then Minister, former Minister Assam, took it to another level and took our hands and, and ensured that we, we, we got the injections of funding to move us to where we needed to be to showcase all of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, Chief Secretary, showcase Trinidad and Tobago. And now we have the greatest friend of the business community, the very hard-working Minister of Trade and Industry, who has taken to the stratosphere. We cannot have a TIC without having a conversation with the minister and her team at the Ministry of Trade. She's the dedicated sponsor from since 20, sorry, from since 2000, uh, 1999 to today. The Ministry of Trade and Industry has been that significant constant for the TTMA as a sponsor. Minister, they gave me three pages to read out. <laughs> but all I will say is the minister is a very close, hard-working friend of the TTMA and the business community. We continue to work with the minister to remove obstacles to trade. We work with the minister in outlining our needs in the budget. And I'm not going to go into the details of the statistics. I'm sure she's going to present that on what the trade statistics has, has been um, for the last uh, year in 2021 and the first half of 2022. I can tell you it's very favorable and we look forward to her delivering it. Minister. Thank you very much. And permit me to acknowledge my colleagues who are here, Terence Dayal Singh, um, Marvin Gonzalez, Renuka Segran Singh. And at this time, please pardon the rest of the protocols. Uh, so good evening, and it really is a pleasure to be here to address you at the opening ceremony of the 23rd Annual Trade and Investment Convention. On behalf of Prime Minister, Dr. The Honorable Keith Rowley, who couldn't make it. And let me say how pleased we are to be back in this physical setting after a two-year hiatus. We acknowledge that technology ensure the continuity of the event during the COVID-19 pandemic. However, there is absolutely no doubt that face-to-face -face interactions add a distinctive element to strong relationships between buyers and sellers, create a long-lasting impact, and contribute to the vibrant atmosphere for which the Trade and Investment Convention is known. The Trinidad Tobago Manufacturers Association must be commended for developing this invaluable platform which brings together manufacturers, service providers, buyers, distributors, financial institutions, investors and regulatory agencies. Your success has positioned the Trade and Investment Convention as the Caribbean's premier business-to-business -business trade show. I also acknowledge the president of the TTMA, Trisha Kusal, for her astute leadership and ensuring that the TTMA remains critically involved in the growth and development of the manufacturing sector in Trinidad and Tobago. 
This year's theme, Business Resilience, is quite appropriate. Resilience is key to not only recovering but doing so quickly, but also to maintaining the flexibility and perseverance to thrive and developing the capacity to expand and adapt to disruptions and threats that will come in some shape or another in the future. The strength of the manufacturing sector is evident in the data. In 2021, the manufacturing sector accounted for 19.3% of real GDP, valued at approximately 26.4 billion TT dollars. And its importance is also evident as the sector has consistently employed more than 50,000 persons. And according to the most recent available data from the Central Statistical Office, exports within the manufacturing sector grew by 7.7% in the fourth quarter of 2021, from 6.19 billion to 6.66 billion dollars. The largest growth was registered in the food, beverage, and tobacco subsectors, from 1.58 billion to 1.84 billion, representing an increase of 16%. And this increase has followed through in 2022. So for the first half of 2022, January to June, Trinidad and Tobago's non-energy manufacturing sector exports valued approximately 5.98 billion, 17% higher than the same period the previous year. And a closer examination of this data exemplifies this resilience in a number of the industry's subsectors, showing increases from January to June 2021 to June, January to, to the same period in 2022 as follows. Food and beverage industry increased by 28% from 1.13 billion to 1.44 billion. Chemicals and fertilizers increased by 103% from 186 million TT to 379 million TT. Paper and paper related products increased by 29% from 215 million to 278 million. Tobacco increased by 31% from 84 million to 110 million. Glass and glass products increased by 45% from 70 million to $102 million. Furniture and light fittings increased by 12% from 42 million to 47 million. And wood and wood related products increased by 55% from 9 million to 14 million. Ladies and gentlemen, all of the subsectors have shown resilience. And indeed, and indeed, the data underscores the dynamic role and contribution of the manufacturing sector to our economy. And according to UNIDO, which is the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, the COVID-19 pandemic has drawn attention to the manufacturing industry's role in social and economic resilience in national economies across three dimensions. And the first dimension entails the role of manufacturing industries as providers of essential goods which are critical to life and national security, and we saw that during the pandemic. The second highlights the role of manufacturers in supplying goods that are critical to tackling the emergency itself. And the third dimension relates to the manufacturing con sector's contribution to the recovery and growth of national economies, and we've seen that. The government of Trinidad and Tobago has always valued the significant role of our local manufacturing sector and remains committed to doing what's necessary to transform it into, what is, into one that is globally competitive, productive, and innovative, utilizing advanced technologies and environmentally friendly practices as articulated in the Roadmap to Recovery Report, the National Development Strategy Vision 2030, and the Trinidad and, and Tobago Trade Policy 2019-2023. And while the domestic manufacturing sector has, dis that has displayed exceptional performance and gained significant momentum in 2021, which is synonymous with global trends, it should be noted that Deloitte in its 2022 manufacturing industry outlook has cautioned that there are ongoing risks associated with supply chain instability, rising commodity prices, and environmental challenges. 
and to treat with these challenges, Deloitte specifies in the context of resilience that countries must not only defend against disruption, but strengthen their offense through the consideration of preparing the workforce, remaking supply chains, and acceleration of digital technologies. And as companies seek to be long-lasting, building a skillful workforce and resolving the talent scarcity are crucial. And the World Economic Forum, in an article entitled Empowering the Gen Next Generation Manufacturing Workforce, tells us that despite the fact that manufacturing jobs are in demand, the number of vacant entry-level manufacturing positions continue to increase, and that happens here as well. The reality is manufacturers are finding it more difficult to find talent today as many vacancies require hands-on training. And further, the digital transformation of the manufacturing sector is also changing the skills required. Businesses therefore have the responsibility to re-architecture the workplace, to rethink the composition and capabilities of their workforce, and adopt flexible and innovative strategies to attract and retain talent. And this should be, prepared, should be paired with strategies in upskilling and reskilling of the workforce within your organizations. Recognizing this, the government too has identified the need to address skills and jobs in an integrated manner. And pillar four of the roadmap for, return, for Trinidad and Tobago transforming to a new economy and a new society identifies the need to enhance human resource capacity in the manufacturing sector to address the existing labor skills gaps. So in May 2022, the Ministry of Trade and Industry launched the first, we heard you, and we launched the first apprenticeship program for the non-energy manufacturing sector. And this three-year program is expected to train in the first instance over 300 apprentices in the industrial areas of mechanical engineering technology, electro electrical electronic technology, industrial maintenance technology, and mechatronics. And this was based on the vacancies identified in the 2019 Labor Market Review of Select Non-Energy Manufacturing Subsectors. The government is also very pleased that we were able to launch another apprenticeship program for the wood and woodworking products manufacturing subsector in August of this year. And this program seeks to transform and expand the industry to produce higher value added products through the use of modern technology. It would also provide an opportunity to diversify Trinidad and Tobago's manufacturing profile expanding from the production of food and beverage, which currently dominates Trinidad and Tobago's non-energy manufacturing. And in the first instance, the program will, enjoy, in, will employ 50, manufacture, 50 apprentices to be trained for a two-year duration at MIC St. B Technology Center and Pleasantville Technology Center. Another key area of focus for a resilient manufacturing sector is the development of diverse, flexible, and more integrated supply chains. And therefore, reshoring and nearshoring have become necessary to maintain an advantage not only for growth, but also in preparation for what may be the next disruption. The private sector, therefore, is encouraged to remake and diversify their supply chains through the identification of multiple sources of raw materials, multiple production locations, and multiple warehouse hubs and distribution channels. And only last week, in, uh, the government of Trinidad and Tobago hosted the Agri-Investment Forum and Expo, with the main objective being to reduce the CARICOM region's food import bill by 25% by 2025, requiring the development of regional value chains in agriculture and agro-processing. The CARICOM private sector organization has identified 19 potential agri-food investment opportunities in keeping with the objective to reduce the food uh, import bill. And further, a food development plan between the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and the Republic of Guyana identifies the following priority areas for further development, which include aquaculture, rice, agro-processing, and food distribution, 
livestock production, coconut, corn, and soya. The private sector is therefore invited to capitalize on the opportunities for investment along the value chain in the growth and production of primary products, sorting and processing, manufacturing, packaging, transportation, distribution and brokerage, wholesale and retail, and to get involved in the remaking of the value chains associated with the food and beverage sector. And it is fortuitous that this year's TIC was preceded by the country's first ever Agri-Expo, as there are many backward and forward linkages between agriculture, manufacturing, and downstream energy sectors. And we must work on these and develop them further. The government is also supporting the private sector in strengthening advancing supply chains through Export TT's implementation of the International Certification Fund, which is one initiative under the Export Booster Initiative. The overall thrust is to facilitate the continuing evolution of the manufacturing sector to become globally competitive, productive, and innovative. And in this vein, the International Certification Fund provides assistance to exporters in achieving international certification in food and beverage and other product compliance so as to meet the quality and safety standards of international markets and franchises and to reduce the quantity of imported goods that can be produced locally, import substitution, and to boost the production of non-energy exports. A total of 11 companies have benefited from this international certification program to date, and there is room for many more firms to participate in this expansionary opportunity. And further to this, the negotiation and expansion of trade agreements with countries in Central, South, and Latin America continue to create further opportunities for nearshoring. Let me say something on technology, data, and innovation. The acceleration of digital technology and innovation are pivotal to the success of the manufacturing sector. The conversion of artificial intelligence, blockchain, and robotics are fundamentally shifting manufacturing, and therefore local enterprises should be embedding these technologies in their operations today if they wish to remain competitive. Data analytics allows businesses to optimize their performance and drive innovation. And so the Ministry of Trading and Industry, Trade and Industry launched the Trinidad and Tobago tr uh, Trade and Business Information Portal in May of this year, geared towards redoubling our efforts to amplify the international competitiveness and enhance the ease of doing business locally. This new portal provides access to multiple tools and resources under the categories of trade, business, and investment. And under each category, detailed step-by-step -step guidance on how to import and export goods, regulatory requirements for starting a new business or expanding an, expa an, an existing business, and regulatory requirements when undertaking an investment are provided. The portal also has an extremely use useful HS code and tariff finder which allows users to search for the most favored nation tariff rates for commodities imported into Trinidad and Tobago. It also allows users to access updated legislation, trade agreements, bilateral investment treaties, double taxation treaties, and other legal reference documents pertaining to trade and business. Our portal is one of the few globally that utilizes customized tools used by the International Trade Center to make global trade more transparent and to facilitate access to markets. And these tools will enable your companies to identify export and import opportunities, compare market access requirements, monitor national trade performance, and make well-informed business decisions. These tools cover the world's largest databases on trade statistics, tariff data, and rules of origin related to applicable free trade agreements. And since its launch in May 2022, the portal has received over 120,000 visits from persons in over 77 countries. And the ministry's team will be here at the TIC promoting this tool through interactive presentations. And I encourage all of you to visit the booth for more information on our portal. 
The portal is an integral comp comp component of the, MT of the ministry's flagship TT BizLink platform, which is currently utilized by almost all of the companies rep represented at TIC. The platform is currently undergoing a comprehensive upgrade, which will be completed by January 2023. And through this enhancement project, users can expect a faster, more user-friendly software, as well as a range of new services as we continue to drive to digitize the trading environment. Investment in technology, know-how, and knowledge transfer is critical to innovating and creating new products and increasing trade. And to develop the appropriate environment for the promotion of, inv of investments, the government has, ex has developed and is currently implementing the, specialized, the Special Economic Zones regime. As you know, the Act was already partially proclaimed uh, in January of this year, and it will create a modern license and an administrative regime for operators, SEZ enterprises, and single zone enterprises. And once fully operationalized, domestic and foreign investors can expect enhanced transparency, predictability, and security for their new investments. And as we seek to reshape our institutions, another major initiative to strengthen and modernize the country's export and investment promotion arrangements is the establishment of our trade and investment promotion agency. And akin to international models, the creation of one interface for exporters and investors, both local and foreign, will simplify doing business with Trinidad and Tobago. And our local private sector will also benefit from a more strategic and focused approach through sales and marketing. And under the ambit of this new entity, commercial offices will be established in targeted markets, which will assist to boost exports, diversify export markets, and promote inward investment. As I close, the government remains steadfast in its commitment to assist the manufacturing sector in becoming more agile and more responsive to this rapidly changing and yet disruptive global environment, and to one that is replete with opportunities to strive for excellence and to new heights. To this end, the Trade and Investment Convention continues to provide tremendous avenues to foster and promote business and investment linkages, and gives us a live demonstration of a resilient manufacturing ecosystem which has withstood the challenges of the pandemic and continues to grow despite other global events which we are all familiar with. While the TIC has been with us for more than 23 years, on this 60th year of our country's independence, we must acknowledge the phenomenal role of the Trinidad and Tobago Manufacturers Association in the development and transformation of the manufacturing sector. And I'm sure most of you do not know that the TTMA has been present since 1956 and they've transformed us into a sector that is globally recognized. I take the opportunity to wish happy 60th independence to all of you, of course to your employees and your businesses and to your families. And I thank you very much and I look forward to a very successful trade and invest investment convention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. You see why I said that the Minister is a true friend to the business community of Trinidad and Tobago. Minister, I want to give you the assurances on behalf of the President and the Board of Trinidad and Tobago Manufacturers Association that we are here to work with your ministry, with all ministries, to ensure that we create an economic framework that will allow for sustainability of, and growth of not just the manufacturing sector in Trinidad and Tobago, but all of Trinidad and Tobago. I firmly believe that Trinidad and Tobago produces some of the best people, best looking, best talented, most ingenious, best products. We just have to position ourselves. We just have to continue to push the envelope. We just have to overcome the obstacles that curtail in the trade the way it's supposed to be. We know we're moving towards a CARICOM single market and economy. The TTMA is committed to this process, and we're going to work to ensure that our markets within the CARICOM region is open, tradable, as our forefathers who have framed 
the revised Treaty of CARICOM wanted it to be. So with that, I would now like to call on my Vice President, Mr. Emil Ramkisun, to come and just give a token to one of our presenters. Mr. Ramkisun, Ms. Costello, can I ask you to come to the stage, please? Thank you very much, Emil. I would like to call our second vice president, Dale. Dale is here. Yes, Dale, please. Mr. Parson. And I would like to call Mr. Farley. Please join us on the stage. And keeping with the team of proudly TT. We do have a painting that was done by a local artist to be presented to the Chief Secretary from Tobago. And you can see it's a painting of a scene in Tobago on Pigeon Point. And now I would like to call the President of the TTMA, Ms. Kusal, and the Honorable Minister of Trade and Industry to the stage, please. And again, keeping with the team of Proudly TT, we have another painting that was done, this time a portrait of Port of Spain. Minister, we try to get a view from outside your office space. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. So now we will have the ribbon cutting ceremony, and I would like to invite the Minister, all Ministers, Mr. Balup, our President, Ms. Castello, Chief Secretary, to join us with the ribbon cutting, please. All ministers present, please. Thank you. We just have one last item on the agenda, which is to move the vote of thanks, and this will be very short. I would like to recognize the title sponsors of TIC, the Ministry of Trade and Industry, and, and Baloop Songs. We have a plethora of other sponsors who have facilitated other parts of TIC. TIC has different components to, to this, to, to the show. So I would like to recognize those sponsors and partners, and they are in no particular order. Cargo Consolidators, Blue Waters, Fire One Fireworks, Vasha Food, VS Pharmaceuticals, Nova Farms, Vemco, Nestle, SM Jalil, Najico Insurance, B Mobile, TTT, Ansa Macal, Group of Companies, Invest TT, 
Beacon Insurance, Frontline Ticketing Solution, Exem Bank, Hardco, FedEx, RHS, Ramp Logistics, Angostura, and Brydens. I'd also like to recognize the hard work of the Board of Directors, especially led by the Marketing Chair, Ms. Carlo, who have worked assiduously in the weeks leading up to this show, this event, culminating with the success that we have here. I would like to recognize the hard working staff of the TTME, each and every one of you. Without your hard work and input, this process would not have been the success that I think it would be over the next two days. We will, we will see on Sunday when we're doing our evaluation how successful it was. Not if it was successful, but how successful it was. And finally, thank you, the audience. Thank you to the exhibitors. Thank you to the buyers who have taken your time to join with us this evening. Many of us uh, would not have been out in this kind of environment over the last couple of years, and it's a great opportunity to network. I am pleased to see many of you guys. I hope you will take the opportunity before you leave to continue the networking process. We have a lot of drinks and a lot of um, stuff to, to, to keep you entertained while you network. So thank you very much. Have a safe journey home. Take care.